Welcome. My name is Pete Frizzella. I'm a developer advocate on the Google Analytics team. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about the Google Analytics Super Proxy and what that actually means. Um, from a high level, it really means you can make your data public uh, to drive a lot of different things like w widgets, testing, uh, dashboards. So we'll just get right into it. We'll talk a little bit about the agenda, and then we'll uh, dive right into a demo and some examples. So we're going to talk a little bit about what, the, what it is, so what is a Super Proxy. Uh, some example use case, and then a demo on actually how to get started and, and do this yourself. So we'll kind of go from a start to finish type thing. Um, so what is the Google Analytics Super Proxy? Uh, if you're familiar with um, some of other, other projects from the developer relations team here at uh, Google Analytics, um, we've done stuff like the Google Analytics Easy Dashboard Library, and we have the report automation, which some of you know as the magic script. Uh, so these are kind of projects that we that develop to help um, users and developers also to kind of understand the things you can do uh, with the platform, and also tools that, that solve some more complex uh, problems that people are trying to, uh, to, to solve. So the Super Proxy is just another one of these open source projects um, that can be used as a tool uh, to make your data public. It's uh, open source. It runs on App Engine, so it's an actual web application. Um, there's a f kind of a few key objectives we wanted to meet with this. One was to make it really easy, of course, um, to make it scalable so it suits uh, implementations where you need that kind of scalability or you have a lot of um, visitors, things like that. And also, we wanted to make it extensible. So we'll get a little bit into what that means in a second, but we wanted to make sure that people could take it and transform it uh, and do kind of their own thing with it uh, and provide different formats and stuff like that. So um, with that, let's just kind of get into some examples and use cases and think about um, maybe how you could use this, this new tool. Um, so when you think about um, making your data public, right? One of the use cases might be, and we hear this sometimes, is that people just want to take some report from Google Analytics, some data, uh, and make that publicly available, maybe on their website, um, or maybe internally you might want to do it from an from internal public perspective, um, create like a dashboard that, that you can share with everybody in your account uh, without having to worry about authentication and author authorization, right? So with Google Analytics, of course, you need an account, you need to authenticate, um, but this can be kind of a challenge or complex when you just want to share data with a whole bunch of people. Um, so if you have a website, you might want to show, for example, like this is you know browser share for the last seven days for your site, or some of their demographics maybe of your visitors. Uh, maybe you want to create this page for advertisers that they can come and see it. Um, who knows? But the, the point is you're trying to make some public data um, available. Um, there's a lot of different use cases and, and scenarios where this, this makes sense. So if you think about this, this case where you have a website, the, the, the pie chart, how would you actually go about doing this today? Um, let's look at that scenario and that kind of the process that you'd have to go through. So with any you know, website, um, you have a web page at the minimum, obviously, and that's usually served from kind of a web server or some server. Um, to do this implementation for making data public, there's a few steps you'd have to go through to actually accomplish this and implement this. Um, the first thing is obviously we have to get, we have to get past this uh, issue, this complex issue of authentication, right? You need to make requests to Google Analytics for this data, and you can use the core reporting API. Uh, and other Google Analytics APIs to make requests for data uh, programmatically. But you need to do authentication. And a lot of times, this is OAuth2 uh, is the recommended uh, approach for authentication. And you need to uh, actually interact with the Google accounts and so for all the Google APIs. Um, and once you have that token, you need to save it. And you need to also manage the whole process of refreshing tokens, um, you know, making the request using the token. Uh, so this is the whole process just in and itself, right? And this is this is outside of Google Analytics necessarily, but it's part of any APIs that you work with at Google. And once you've got that token, now someone comes and visits your website, and you want to serve this page to them with this chart that um, has this browser share, for example. So you'd have to make the request to Google, Anal Google Analytics um, through the API, and you'd have to use that token that you stored for authentication, and it would come back with a response with the data that you've requested. Now once you have that data, you have to then parse the data because you need to pull out the information that you actually want to use and display. And then you'd have to transform that in some format that would work with, for this example, we're, we're using the Google Charts uh, API. So you'd have to make sure the data is in a certain format, in this case, let's say data table format, uh, to work with the Charts API. So you'd have to do that yourself and write this uh, script um, on the server side. right? And then at that point, you could show to the user the chart, and they could see this. And this would work for anybody that visited your site, because you're doing everything server side, and it would be public, and everybody could look at it and you'd accomplish what you're trying to do. Um, but it's probably not what you want to do. So you don't want to, for every visitor to your site, you don't want to have to go to Google Analytics and say, give me the data, and then come back, parse it. You want to actually save it. So you probably want to put the response in some kind of data store or database on the server side. All right, so now you have it saved. But the thing is, now it's saved, you want to make sure it gets refreshed or updated on a regular basis. You don't want to be serving data that's two weeks old, and you don't have to manually do this. 
So you actually want to have something like a refresh that's done at an automatic, uh, automatically in like at a set interval, maybe like every hour or every two days or one day, depending on the data uh, in your account and what you think might make sense. So in that case, the whole kind of system looks something like this, where you have the web server, all these different components that are each kind of doing their own part uh, to serve this data uh, publicly. This is really complex, right? I mean, you're doing things server side. You have to write all these code and scripts to get all this to work. And really, you just want to show like a pie chart that has some data about your browser share. And you want to do this like in a scalable way that's kind of easy. Um, the other thing is, when you think about saving data and caching it, again, it's a little bit more complex. Um, but but ultimately, what would end up happening is if you got the system in place, is that more visitors would come, and you would actually be s uh, serving the data from the data store, or the database, which is more efficient would save you on quota and things like that. So um, the other thing is that if you maybe you can't control the, what's on the web server, and maybe you don't even have the option to write code or write scripts, uh, in that case, the only thing maybe you can do usually is maybe provide like a JavaScript snippet on the HTML page. And that's kind of the extensive, uh, that's about extensive as much as changes you can make to a site. And in that case, you wouldn't even be able to do this implementation because you wouldn't have access to the server itself. So it's complex. Obviously, we kind of understand this. Um, and that's where kind of the Google Analytics proxy uh, can, can come in and take away a lot of this complexity. So if we look at an implementation where you've deployed uh, your own instance or your own application of the Google Analytics proxy, um, if you look at those components now where they would fit, uh, it looks something more along the lines of this. You do that authentication with the Google Analytics proxy. So you've given access to that web application to access your Google Analytics data. And it does this all through a web interface. It's all a web flow. So you don't have to worry about writing code for that. Once it's got that token, it'll manage all of the refreshing and getting valid tokens, and it'll communicate directly for you with the Google Analytics servers uh, and APIs. Uh, and it'll then handle the responses from Google Analytics. Right? And once it has the response for you, it'll save it for you in a data store automatically. It will also uh, refresh it for you, of course. It'll do that all at managing that for you. And it'll also do the time interval. So if you can say, I want to refresh it every hour, and it'll take care of that for you. You don't have to worry about manually going and refreshing this. And then finally, and most importantly, one of the big things about this is that it'll do some transformations for you. Um, it'll change the, the format response from Google Analytics API is JSON, is a, is a default format. It'll transform that to different things like CSV, uh, data table, TSV. And again, what you mentioned earlier was one of the things we wanted to make sure was that this was extensible. So it's, it's obviously possible this is open source for other people to write different kind of formats that they can transform to. Um, so now we've kind of removed all that complexity from the web server, and now it's sitting and taken care of uh, for you by the Google Analytics Super Proxy that you deploy. And then when you create queries, you actually get these like public endpoint URLs, and I'll explain that in a second. But if you think about that scenario now, you have the web server, which just might be an HTML page being served somewhere. It doesn't really matter at this point now. Um, and in that page, you're going to actually make the request. The client is going to make the request for the visitor is making the request directly to the Super Proxy. Uh, in this case, it's pulling the data directly from Super Proxy. It's cache, it's fast, um, and it's scalable. And the, now you're going to have this, this, this pie charts or whatever visualization or whatever you're doing is being driven through this proxy. Uh, and it's a public URL. So anybody can visit that URL and, and, and get this data. And because it's cache and it's, and it's, and it's being going through the, the Super Proxy, you're going to save on quota. You don't, it doesn't matter how many visitors come in. It's going to scale up. Uh, App Engine um, is great for that, obviously. So we removed all this complexity. It's a little bit nicer now. Um, we'll explain in a second how you actually get this and deploy this thing. Um, but let's take a step back for a second and think about you know, what this actually means when you say public versus private. What does that mean? Um, so it's an App Engine uh, web application, right? It runs on App Engine, the super proxy. And you're the admin of it, so you deploy it and you run it and you kind of manage it. Um, once you've authenticated, that's all taken care of uh, for you, the tokens and things. And what you do then is you create a query. And you say, I want to I make a new query public, new data public. So you go in there, you create a query, and you specify what the query should be, um, you know, what dimensions and metrics, so kind of the standard stuff that you would do for any co-reporting. Um, and then what it would do, it's going to create the query for you, and it'll assign an ID to the query. So for example, we have a query here for country and visits, and it's got an ID of 12345. It gets saved to the data store in the Google Analytics Super Proxy. And only you have access to this, uh, this application because you are the administrator of it. Uh, and then what happens is um, there's a public endpoint or URL that's pointing to your, your instance of this web application. And you can give out this URL, and you can give people the IDs for the queries that you'd like to make public. And these can be used anywhere, right? So it can be just made directly for requests. It can be used as part of a web um, dashboard. The point is that these URLs that you provide uh, will be public. So for example, 
In this case, we would have a public URL that's called, um, so it's hosted on App Engine, so you have an appspot.com domain, but you can use your own domain on App Engine. That's, that's definitely possible. Um, and you would provide this URL with a query ID. So query equals 12345, and you give that URL out, and that URL will then query to the super proxy, which will retrieve the public stored version of that response and return it back to the user. Right? So you're enabling these certain queries that you want to make public by using the super proxy and, and using these URLs that become uh, what you can consider public endpoints. So let's do a little bit of a demo. Um, for example, I have something here running. So this is a pie chart thing. This is actually coming um, from an instance of super proxy that I've deployed. Uh, this is a public, um, these are public URLs. And you'll see that this file here is just an HTML file sitting on my desktop. It's not hosted anywhere, it's just a simple HTML file. If you look at the source, so I have two charts on here. These are, this is actually coming directly from the super proxy. Um, if you look at the source, you'll see all of this JavaScript here is just standard charts. So this is Google Charts, which is a visualization library. It used to be called GFIS. Um, this is all kind of standard JavaScript. Um, there's nothing really here customized other than the fact, other than the stuff that's like directed towards Super Proxy. So, for example, for the data source, use this this endpoint, and this endpoint is the Super Proxy. And then we're just doing a couple things, like we're setting the refresh interval, and we have a couple configuration options, like um, the the title and the stuff like that. But none of this is prepared, uh, customized JavaScript and like that. The only thing that we're really doing is just pasting in these certain values. Um, which is the URL from the super proxy. And um, so I could give this file to anybody. So let's take a look um, a little bit about how you would actually go ahead and do this. Right? So there's kind of three steps um, to deploy the app. That's the first thing you need to do. This is a one time configuration, right? You need to deploy the app and run your own instance of this on App Engine. App Engine provides free, uh, so, so some free quota, which is probably good for most use cases. Um, and you probably wouldn't need to go beyond the, the free quota. Um, so it's free to set up and, and create, and all the source, uh, source files are available on GitHub. So first thing to do is get the app from GitHub. There's a link there. We'll provide these resources later. Um, the second thing is you need to set up and configure the application. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And then you want to deploy this thing to App Engine. So this will give you like your actual like appspot.com. Um, a hosted application, right? So start off with GitHub. Um, this is the actual repository um, for the super proxy. So you can come in here and download it. And there's a whole bunch of instructions here and, and more information around how to actually do this. Uh, so if you want more detailed instructions, please visit this site. Um, but once you've downloaded it, uh, so for you downloaded it to your machine or whatever, you can pull the, make a pull request and get the source. And I have it actually sitting over here in this folder, um, Google Analytics Super Proxy, right? So we'll show that in a second. The other thing you need to do is you want to create an actual um, application on App Engine. So you can sign up for an account. On and you create an identifier. So for example, it could be like my proxy app or something like that. right? You want to check if it's available and create the app. But this, this application identifier is important because we need to use that. right? So in this case, I've got my proxy app. Um, so we'll remember that in a second. So you create the application. And you also need to um, create an API. Um, APIs console. And we'll create a new project. We're going to call it proxy project. Configuration options. What's important here is that you change this here to point to your new App Engine instance that you just created a second ago. So in our example, ours was my proxy app, and it would be at appspot.com, right? And there's uh, this is all in, in the instructions also, but there's the callback URL for OAuth is admin slash auth, right? So that's the one configuration that you have to change, and then we don't need to worry about this. And you create the client ID.
and load it um, also. There's a source folder. And within that, there's a few things you need to make changes. One is the app.yaml file. So if we open that, we'll see that at the top of it, there's a first line, and it says application. And this is where you would specify the ID that you just created uh, in App Engine that you want to use for your instance of this. So it would be my proxy app. right? Save that. So then we're done with that file. It's configured. The other thing is the um, we'd also want to configure the um, client ID for the OAuth 2, right? So there's a config.py file here. We'll open that one. And you'll see the same thing. There's a few fields that we have to fill out. And it tells you which ones to replace. But we need a client ID. So in this case, we would go back to the APIs console. And we would copy the client ID. Copy that and replace this. Okay. We'd also copy, copy the client secret. And again, we'd put that into the OAuth client secret. And we're going to deploy this right to App Engine. Um, but you could also run a local environment if you wanted to. And there's instructions on how to do this. But for this point, um, we're just going to do our redirect URI. We only need the host name um, and domain for this particular instance. We don't need to worry about the URL part of it or the page path. So in here, we would just put, for the OAuth redirect URI, we just put proxy app dot, dot AppSpot.com, and, and it automatically will take care of the admin auth part for us. And then there's this um, kind of secret phase, phrase down here, which is used for um, cross-site stuff. So you can just you know, put some kind of unique thing down there that you don't share and keep secret. right? So all this should be kept secret, and you're the only one that has access to it. But we save that, and we close this. And then you want to launch um, and deploy this on App Engine. So the way to do that now is, well, I guess there's one more thing that you might want to configure, and this is optional is the, in the controller's util, there's a, a co.py file. And this is the constants file that you can, there's a couple things you can configure in here. It's up to you if you want to do this, um, but it really depends on your on how you want to deploy this. But there's two things. One is anonymized responses. And this is set to false by default. But what this allows you to do is you've set this to true. Any response you get back from Google Analytics usually contains information like the profile ID, the account information, uh, things like this that are part of the request that you usually make. So in this case, what will happen is if you put this to true, uh, the responses you get back will be, uh, those keys will be removed from the response. So we'll remove stuff like the query itself, which contains profile information, and the account ID and web property. Now, this isn't like a truly like private thing, but these are values they might not just want to make available and share. So if you set this to true, that's what will happen in that case. And the other thing is that we provide the um, functionality for relative dates. So you don't have to specify in your query Start date is you know July 23rd and end date is July 29th or something like that. You can actually specify relative dates, and those will automatically get resolved for you uh, every time a query is made. So in that case, we need to determine what time zone should we resolve these dates to. And by default, it's Pacific, but you can come in here and change this to. Um, so right now, it supports uh, North American time zones and UTC. Uh, so if you're in the Eastern and you want to make sure that your queries are resolved to Eastern time uh, executions, and you can do that. Um, but for now, it's Pacific, so. We'll close this. So those three files we edited was the app.yaml, which was just to put in your ID. There was the config.py, which is for your OAuth2 client details. And then there's this co.py, which is in the um, utility folders, which allows you to configure a few different options. right? But this is the only time you have to do this. Once you've deployed the app, it's going to be running, and you won't have to do this again. Um, but let's look at how you would deploy it. So if you have the Google App Engine launcher installed, and again, there's detailed instructions on the GitHub site for this. Um, you would actually just go to Add Existing Application, browse for it. Um, and in this case, so I have the Super Proxy folder sitting here. Here's the source. And you just want to go to the folder that has the app.yaml in it at the root. And you choose that folder. And you say Add. And you'll see now it's added to the uh, launcher. And then you can just right click it or go to Control and go to Deploy. And it'll ask you for your um, Google account for App Engine. And it'll deploy it to App Engine. And once it's deployed, uh, it's ready to be used, right? And as uh, long as you have the same account, Gmail account or Google account, um, for what you've deployed and what, what app engine it, uh, you created, um, the instance created, then you'll be an admin of the actual application. OK, so we won't actually deploy that. But So let's take a look at, um, so this is the one time thing. You've created it's deployed. Now you can actually use this proxy. Let's see what that uh, entails and how you'd actually create the query uh, and get this working. So there's kind of three things on how to do this. So if we want to go from um, a blank page to this, to this where we have pie charts and things that are getting uh, data from public endpoints, um, I have a, a file sitting here. So this is just um, a, a kind of a how-to example. If you look at this source for this file, um, you'll see that it's um, 
it's got just the standard JavaScript here, which is nothing customized. It's just uh, you could copy and paste this yourself and use this. And I can provide this later. Um, there's a couple things we need to get. So let's create a query, and let's see if we can get our chart to show up on this. So let's start by going to the super proxy itself. So once you've deployed it, um, you can visit the super proxy by going to the host name slash admin. And that'll get you to this um, particular page, right? And the first thing you need to do that initial time is to authorize the application to access your Google Analytics data, right? So you'll see that there's an authorize access button. And you click that. And it'll go through the OAuth2 flow. And you accept it. And we've su successfully connected, right? So now that we've connected, um, I'll just change this. We can actually start creating queries now. And you'll see something like this when you come in after you've authenticated. And you only need to authenticate the first time. And after that, it'll stay authenticated until you revoke access, right? So this is only a one time thing you need to do. So, what we want to do is create a query, right? So, we want to make something public. Let's do something like we'll share the source, medium, and visits, right? And we'll do a pie chart to kind of show this. So, we'll go to create query. And you have this interface here to actually create the query. Um, so right now, we're, we're using the core reporting API, obviously, to make these requests. And at this point, we're asking for, in the admin interface here, is the actual core reporting API query that you want to make. Um, so I suggest you can use something like the Query Explorer um, to actually do this query and get the data you want, and then just copy the API query and put it into the super proxy um, to use it. So for example, we'll do something like GA source medium, which is a new dimension we actually just released recently. And we'll do GA visits for the actual data that we want to share. And we'll sort it by GA visits um, descending. And the, the date doesn't really matter, so we'll just get the data. So this looks good. And actually, you know, we'll just do top five. So I'll do max results five. And this looks like the data I kind of want to share. So this looks fine. The dates don't really matter because we're going to use relative dates. We don't want it to be a static report. We want it to be kind of moving over time, right? Um, so we'll grab the URL here. We'll just copy this URL, which is the actual core reporting API request. And we'll go back to Zoom Proxy. So we'll name this, let's say, top five source mediums. And this is going to be, we're going to do it for the last seven days. OK. We'll refresh this, let's just say, uh, you know, once a day, or maybe twice a day or something. So let's go, this is in seconds, so we'll just say like it's around 4,300 seconds. You have to do the calculation. <laughs> Um, and then we'll paste in that URL, um, which is the query URI for the particular uh, data that we want. And then we're going to replace the dates with relative dates, right? So you can see here there's some supported date parameters. So one of them is today, which will resolve to today's date when the query is executed. Uh, and then we have end days ago. So with these two things, you can pretty much create any relative query, uh, relative date query that you'd like. So we're going to remove the end date here and change it to today, right? And we'll change the start date to six days ago. So six days ago, and today will give us seven days of data. So we'll change this to six days ago. OK. So anytime this query gets executed, it's going to, uh, at that time, resolve the dates uh, properly. So tomorrow it'll be, today will be tomorrow, and it'll be continuing to go on. So you're always going to have the last seven days of data. So we have the option to test the query, which we'll do. And oops, made some mistake here. every 4,300 seconds. So the initial one will, will should be scheduled and running uh, probably in the next few seconds or so. We, we should be getting a response back. Um, but you'll see this interface now for each query that you have. And it kind of has all this information about the query itself. So we have the, the name that we just gave it, obviously. And we have this URL. And this URL here is the, is the public URL. So you can give this URL to anybody, uh, and they will get the response back from the query. So this is getting them out of authentication. It's a public URL that works. Uh, then we have formats, so we can do stuff like CSV, data table, and those will um, provide the same response, um, but in the specific format. And then we can see what the original query was that we're actually using to drive this. And then we have other things like scheduling, like is it running right now? It's currently scheduled to run every 4 to 300 seconds. When was it last refreshed? 
And then we also have stuff like, what is the last save request we had? Like, what does the response look like? And what's the request count? How many times have people actually requested this URL externally? Uh, and then what was the last time they requested it? Right? So if we click this URL, um, if it's run already, we'll see a response. Yeah. So this is the public proxytest.opspot.com. And this URL is now public. Anybody can visit this URL and get this data. Um, you'll see the response here is from directly what it would look like from the core reporting API response. It's just the same response. But because we enabled the anonymized responses, there is actually no profile data in this. It just has the, the raw reporting data and no like account information and profile data. So this is now public. It's cached. It's available for us to use. Um, if you click on the data table response format, we'll see that it comes back with a little bit slightly Query, but it's in data table format. And we can actually use this directly with the Google Charts API, which is great. This is, we can drive our, our Charts API, um, and pie charts, and all these things with this particular query. If we refresh this, we'll actually see some updated information now for our query. So for example, we know it was last refreshed 59 seconds ago, this particular data. And the last requested was nine se 19 seconds ago was the last time it was requested. And it's been requested two times. And then we can see here the actual response that we have saved in the data store. So this gives you some information about what's going on. You can also pause scheduling. You can refresh the query now. If you want to, don't want to wait another 4,300 seconds, you can tell it to refresh now. And you can also disable the endpoint, which will uh, disable it from being available publicly. So um, if you do that, then anybody who tries to visit the URL will get an error message saying it's not, uh, not available. So now we kind of see the interface and we have this query uh, created. Let's actually use it and try to drive this pie chart that we have with this data that we have. So I'm going to go to the data table response. This is the one we want. We want to use the data table. And we'll copy this URL. And now this is our current page. So if I refresh it, we'll see we get nothing here. And let's go to our source for that page. Again, like all this JavaScript here is currently just standard JavaScript. There's no special customization or anything like that. Um, we have a div down here that's going to hold the chart. And then we have this ch charts, um, Google Charts JavaScript that, that interacts with the service to create these charts. So, there's a data source, data source URL um, that we want to replace with our public, our public endpoint. And it doesn't need to be HTTP, so we can just make it HTTP. So this is our data. This points to our source medium, top five sources. And we're going to just replace the title with our own little title, you know, top five source medium last seven days. Okay. And we can replace also the, um, there's a refresh interval. You know, since we're updating this data every, every um, twice a day, uh, we can just change this to around the same interval or less. It, does, it doesn't matter. And this is just going to be if someone leaves the page open, this is how often it's going to refresh that page. But most times, you, know, you might not need that. So let's save this. We have a re response there. And let's refresh the page. Oh, did I save it right? And there it is. Okay. So this has actually made a request directly to the super proxy and requested the data that we just created. And uh, again, I could, I could send this HTML file to anybody or post this anywhere. And anybody who visits it would be able to see this chart. Um, and again, it's cached, so it's fast, you're saving quota. Uh, and it's all being directed through the super proxy. Great. So we did it. Let's go back and uh, talk a little bit more some other stuff that we do. But this is kind of like one example and what you could do with it. There's a lot of obviously little, little other use cases that you could um, definitely implement this. You could use other charts, APIs. What's important is that you have to make sure the data that you're using, um, the data table response, uh, is going to work with certain visualizations because some visualizations require certain columns and data. So as long as you have that configured properly, um, you can definitely just pop in the URL to the data source URL attribute of a charts API and uh, automatically use the super proxy as a source for all your different charts. So yeah, part, pat yourself on the back. If you just did that, you just automatically uh, opened up some data to the, to the world through, um, through the super proxy. So let's continue a little bit and see uh, a few other things I want to touch on um, you know, to make you guys excited about using this thing. The more features that are coming, uh, things that you can do with this um, that aren't really apparent that, that you didn't see there but uh, are actually, actually happening in the background. So things like you can do multiple users. So although you've deployed this yourself and you're an admin for the application, you can add users um, through the interface. You'll see there's a manage users. And you can add other users that can come in, authorize their own Google Analytics account, and create their own queries that become public. Right? Because of the caching, um, this is a huge thing. You're going to save a lot of quota. If, you're, if you have a lot of visitors, it's going to scale nicely for you um, because you're not going to have to hit the Google Analytics API service for each request. You can kind of rely on the proxy to take care of that for you. 
auto scheduling. This is another uh, feature that happens in the background. So for example, you just say you query, you create a query and you say, I want to refresh this every hour, right? And you make the URL public, but nobody visits the URL and it's been you know two hours and nobody's visiting the URL. What will actually happen, the super proxy will look and say, okay, this hasn't been requested for a couple hours. We'll pause the scheduling for now. We won't make any more updates from in, uh, to Google Analytics to get more data because nobody's using it anyways. Uh, and this is going to save you on quota again because now you're not requesting data that isn't necessarily being used. Right? Now, subsequently, if someone does visit and uses that URL, it will go and fetch the latest data for the person or for the visitor, return that latest response to them, and then automatically start scheduling again every hour. And it'll continue to do that um, and does it for any queries. Um, so it's again, it's saving on quota, and it's a little bit kind of um, just a nice feature to have to, to not use up quota that doesn't really need to be um, doesn't need to be used, right? The other thing is we also handle error logging um, or error responses. So it does happen for once in a while you might get an error response back from the service or something, maybe a token's expired or something, something's happened that's unexpected. Um, in that case, when it does the refresh to get the latest data from Google Analytics, if it was an error, it will um, log the error and retry again, um, but it won't return back an error response to the user. So we'll always return back, the best effort is to return back the most, uh, the most recent successful response. So if you continue to get errors, we're always going to return back the data that's actually, um, um, that's actually a, from a 200 successful response. Um, and this is great. So you don't, users aren't going to have broken charts. You're not going to have error messages showing up on pages. And also, uh, after you've hit about 10 errors, it will automatically pause the scheduling for that query. And th it'll require the admin to come in and make sure they clear the error and, and at least take a, address the situation to see what the problem is. And then also we support callbacks. So if you want to um, query uh, maybe a JSON response with a callback URL because you want to handle it and do some maybe client-side uh, parsing, you can definitely use the callback. And this is described in, on the GitHub um, README. So definitely it's another feature that people uh, wanted and, and um, is part of this. So for the future, and we talked about a little bit about extensibility and what was important for this thing. Uh, in the future, I mean, you can imagine that we have data response, which works really well with the uh, charts, Google Charts. Uh, but you can imagine you might want to provide formats that work really well with other visualization libraries. And this is definitely possible because you can take the response. Um, we've made it very easy to add new trans, um, transforms or new, new formats that you can return. Um, so definitely this is something that the community and, and you know, as, as much as we can would try to provide more formats for people that, that are of interest. Um, also, we can do stuff like maybe in the future, maybe day, day comparison, being able to handle calculated metrics kind of responses um, for certain use cases. But it's early on, so we'll see, we'll see whether, whether there's demand and what people are maybe are looking for. And then also, you could you know, use this as a testing platform, uh, create some queries, and, and um, test against the, the, the proxy instead of the actual Google Analytics service, which would save you um, uh, quota and, and um, you know, maybe give you more stable kind of, if you're looking for a specific response, uh, you definitely can use this as, as a platform for that. And there's a whole bunch of other use cases. I'm sure people will figure out um, what they can do with this thing. But, uh, but it's available and freely, um, freely available. It's open source it's on GitHub. So I recommend check it out. And um, we'll provide some resources here. Um, definitely go to the GitHub, to the repo. There's also a link on developers.google.com. Uh, which gives you a little bit more detail about like the managed users and kind of other uh, information around the proxy that, that we didn't cover today. Uh, and then the chart wrapper, which is that JavaScript I was using as part of the example, uh, you can go to the uh, charts developer site, and uh, there's a link here, and that'll show you the, the JavaScript snippet. And I can provide that as, as a sample also. But uh, it's really just easy as, as providing the, uh, the URL as a data source. And then, of course, App Engine and APIs Console for more information on how to deploy and, uh, and use this. So I want to thank you very much for uh, joining me today. I hope this was useful for you. And I hope uh, some of you will be able to take advantage of uh, what are some of the features that the proxy uh, provides. And uh, yeah, definitely download Google Analytics Super Proxy and, and let me know how things go. Thanks. Bye.